Nintendo Wii here, welcome back to Let's Play Retro Games, and welcome to my video about this amazing game here, Sonic Pocket Adventure for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. So, Sonic Pocket Adventure, it was actually only the second ever Sonic game not released on a Sega console. Unfortunately, the first place goes to a terrible game for the Tiger Game Con called Sonic Jam. It has no resemblance to the Saturn Sonic Jam game, but that's for another day. We're here to talk about this amazing gem, and what a gem it is. IGN back in the day actually gave this game a complete 10 out of 10. It's in fact the only 10 out of 10 that they've given any Sonic game. I wouldn't say it's the best Sonic game of all time, but it's certainly up there with the best. Being released on the Neo Geo Pocket, it wasn't actually developed by Sega, it was actually developed by SNK themselves. Sega and SNK had a pretty good relationship up until this point. In fact, you can actually use the Neo Geo Pocket and the Dreamcast and link them together. Kind of like you can do with the GameCube and the Game Boy Advance. There was only a few games that supported it, and apparently Sonic Adventure was supposed to support it with Sonic Pocket Adventure, but that never came to see the light of day, unfortunately. Would have been really interesting to see. I wonder if maybe the Chow Gardens in Sonic Advance and Sonic Adventure 2 Battle kind of somehow came from this game. Anyway, that's for another day as well. So before we take a look at some gameplay, let's take a quick look at the box and the cartridge itself. Probably a lot of you guys have never seen a Neo Geo Pocket, or maybe don't even know what one is. So we'll start by taking a look at the cartridge. So here it is. It looks kind of like a GBA game, but a bit taller and about the same thickness. So that's what the cartridge looks like. And over here in the UK, the games actually came in these plastic cases, which are really nice. It turns out that I didn't realise this, but I actually have the American version of Sonic Pocket Adventure. That's why it's in a cardboard box. But it is a really nice package. You can see that it opens up. It opens up here on the side. And inside you've got a really nice looking font colour instruction manual right there. And then you've got this box to display nicely on the shelf. And it's got some screenshots on the back. So as I said, it's got a really nice font colour instruction manual. I mean, not that you really need any instructions on how to play Sonic, but it's there if you want it. It does look really nice. So with those introductions out of the way, let's take a look at the game itself. Here we go! So as you can see, the game looks and sounds fantastic. Some people mistakenly consider this game to be a port of Sonic 2 on an 8-bit console, but actually, that couldn't be further from the truth. It may look like Sonic 2, but the levels do have a lot of influences from other Sonic games, and the music actually comes mostly from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Take the first world here, Neo South Island Zone. It looks like Sonic 1. It uses similar graphics to Green Hill Zone, but it's actually based on Emerald Hill from Sonic 2. And it also has that really cool runway bit from Palm Tree Panic in Sonic CD. And this is basically what to expect throughout the entire game. Just like most of the Sonic games, the levels are split into two different acts in each zone. If you get to the end of a level with 50 rings or more, you get to go into a special stage. These special stages are basically the exact same as Sonic 2, and they're still just as hard as ever. All of the levels are actually designed from scratch, and they have some really fantastic level layouts that really complement the smaller screen size. I also love the fact that the camera moves from one side of the screen to the other. You can always see quite far ahead, which is really great. One thing that is brand new for this game is the bosses, and they're all really good. In fact, some of the later Sonic Advance games even use similar concepts. So here's the first boss, and I'm doing very badly. Uh, oh my god, obviously the idea is not to get hit by the hammer. And then, when it gets near the end, obviously he starts going a bit crazy, as always. But you didn't really get to see that, but basically he just starts flipping himself upside down and generally being a bit more of a nuisance than he already was. So, as I mentioned in the introduction, this game is made by SNK, and some of the team from SNK actually went on to form DIMPS. And some of you may have heard of DIMPS, they're actually the company that created the Sonic Advance and Sonic Rush games on the DS, as well as the slightly less fondly remembered Sonic 4 and Sonic 4 Episode 2. This game is actually one of the very first games to use the new modern Sonic look. So, as you can see, he does have green eyes, and it's kind of funny, they actually started off with classic Sonic for some of the enemies. For example, Dr. Robotnik, or Eggman. 
he actually shows up in his original clothes throughout the game, but then when you actually fight him at the end, he's actually wearing his Sonic Adventure 2 outfit, so there's a bit of a continuity error there. So the zones are Neo South Island, which is based on Emerald Hill, with some elements from Palm Tree Panic and Green Hill Zone thrown in for good measure. For some reason, the background music in this first stage actually comes from the hub world of Sonic Jam on the Sega Saturn, and it does surprisingly fit quite well. The music in Act 2 comes from Angel Island from Sonic the Hedgehog 3, and that's something you'll notice throughout the rest of the game as well. All the music comes from Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and I'm not quite sure how they decided to put them in the levels that they did, but somehow they do seem to kind of fit. It may be a bit jarring at first if you're a fan of classic Sonic, but trust me, you'll get used to it fairly quickly. And the 8-bit renditions of the songs actually sound really good. The second zone in the game is called Secret Plant, and of course, if you're a fan of Sonic, you'll easily recognise this as Chemical Plant Zone. All the major elements from Chemical Plant are here, including the crisscrossing walkways and the moving platforms near the end. The music in this stage, in Act 1, is also from Angel Island, from Sonic 3, and the music in Act 2 is actually from Hydro City. The boss at the end of this world is a really cool one. It's actually something that they reused in Sonic Advance 2, so you can definitely see where some of the ideas for later Sonic games came from in this one. And then, after Chemical Plant, we come to Cosmic Casino. Certainly not Casino Night, although it's basically identical. It even has the same slot machine design that was in Sonic 2, so that's always really cool to see. And the music for this level, in Act 1, is actually from the bonus stage of Sonic 3. The one where you jump into the checkpoint and go into a little bonus room. And music for Act 2 is actually a remix of the slot machine bonus stage from Sonic & Knuckles. And I guess these two are kind of fitting considering it's a casino theme. And as you can see in this game, and one thing that I really enjoy about it, the physics are spot on. Absolutely perfect. There's none of that weird Sonic 4 floatiness going on here. It feels really precise. Especially when you're playing it on the actual Neo Geo Pocket, and you use that amazing clicky joystick. It just feels perfect. It feels really, really good. Seriously, just listen to this amazing clicky analog stick D-pad thing. The only thing that would make this console better is if it had a backlit display. SNK really did a fantastic job with the Neo Geo Pocket. Anyway, after Casino Night Zone we move on to Aquatic Relics. Of course, it's based on Aquatic Ruin from Sonic 2. And this is one of the only levels in the game that actually features an underwater section. And while I was actually looking at the maps for this game, I actually spotted that you can see Dr. Robotnik and Sonic in the actual tiles on the world map. So I'll show you that now, I was quite surprised to find that. So that's a really cool little hidden feature. I'm not sure if you can even see it when you're actually playing through the game, because it looks like it's quite far into the wall. And the music for this zone, Act 1 comes from Mushroom Hill of Sonic and & Knuckles, and Act 2 is another music track from Hydro City from Sonic 3. And at the end of this stage, this is where the game sort of differentiates itself from Sonic 2. You actually get to fight Knuckles, and the, the music in the background when you're fighting Knuckles actually comes from Flying Battery Zone, one of my favourite zones in Sonic and Knuckles. It was really cool to see Knuckles in this game, because when I first played it, I didn't expect to be fighting him, so that was a really nice surprise. He punches you all the way up into the sky because he's just that powerful, and Tails of course catches you on the back of his aeroplane, and now we're in Sky Chase, which is called Sky Chase in Sonic 2, so this is the only level that they didn't actually rename for some unknown reason. It plays almost exactly the same as it does in Sonic 2, so there's not too much to say about this one. And after Sky Chase, you land in Aerobase Zone, which of course is based off Wing Fortress from Sonic 2. You also get to fight Mecha Sonic at the end of this stage, and the fight isn't quite as hard as it used to be on the Mega Drive, so I'm very thankful for that because I used to absolutely hate that boss at the end of Sonic 2, so I'm really glad that they toned it down slightly for this game. 
and the background music for this stage actually comes from Death Egg Zone from Sonic and Knuckles. Then once you've beaten Mecha Sonic, you're on to Gigantic Angel Zone. So this one's kind of a mix of Sonic 1 and Sonic 2. It actually takes some of the graphics from Scrap Brain Zone of the original Sonic the Hedgehog and some elements from Metropolis Zone in Sonic 2. It also includes the really, really frustrating enemies that throw them things, them boomerang things at you. I absolutely hate them, and the crabs with the big fists as well. The level itself though is really fun to play through, although there is one really annoying section which kind of was a hint of things to come with dimps, but no one really knew just how bad they'd get with this at the time. Instant death pits that you can't see coming. It's a pet peeve of mine in 2D Sonic games, and this is where it really starts to become a problem. Well, maybe not here, but definitely in Sonic Advance, which was the next game that they worked on. It really became a problem in that game. The level itself though is really, really fun. It looks and plays great, of course. So the music for this stage, Act 1 comes from Desert Power Zone, and Act 2, this is a really strange choice, but it fits the game really well. It actually comes from one of the multiplayer maps called Chrome Gadget from Sonic 3. And then after Gigantic Angel, we're on to the final boss, which is actually a really simple boss, but if you actually come back with all the Chaos Emeralds, which I didn't manage to do, but if you do, you can actually knock the Emerald out of the back of Eggman's spaceship there, and then turn into Super Sonic and fly off after him. I only know that because I've seen walkthroughs of the game online, and I am not going to attempt to do this for this video because... I've already actually had to play through the game three times now to capture footage because it kept crashing on me, and to be honest, I really love the game so much that I didn't even mind playing through the game three times. In fact, after I'm done editing this video, I might actually go back and play it for a fourth time. It's that good. So this is the final stage in the game. And just before I wrap this video up, I want to talk a bit about some of the special features of the game as well. So, if you notice during any of that gameplay, there's little yellow diamonds that you can collect and they're scattered all throughout the levels, it gives the game a really good replay value. It really pays to explore the levels to find all these different pieces. They unlock something in a puzzle room where you have to match the different tiles up to actually create graphics of all the different characters. And when you've unlocked all them, I think it gives you the option to actually go back and play all the special stages. I haven't managed to find that many, but from looking at the maps, I think you'd actually have to download some maps and actually figure out where some of these are, because they are in really hard to find locations. But like I said, it gives the game a lot of replay value. As well as finding all them puzzle pieces, there's also two different time trial modes. There's a standard time trial mode which just sees you trying to get to the end of the level as fast as possible, and of course then you can try and beat your time, or find out your friend's time and try and beat them. And there's also an advanced time trial mode, which has stricter limits on the sort of scores that you get at the end of the stage, and you also need to finish the level with 50 rings, which definitely makes it a lot harder and a lot more challenging, so that's always really fun to try. There's also a multiplayer mode in the game which I've never had a chance to play, hopefully one day, but I don't actually know anyone else who's got a Neo Geo Pocket. So there we go, that is Sonic Pocket Adventure. A really underrated gem in my opinion, and one of the best Sonic games ever. So, thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this look at Sonic Pocket Adventure for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. I've got a few shout outs that I want to give. Firstly, I want to give a huge shout out to Pixels Limited. Coming soon, he's actually doing a Sonic documentary style video, and I'm going to be featuring in it, so look out for that whenever that comes up. Episode 3 will then be a Super Sonic special, with a whole episode dedicated to the early Sonic games. And we've got a huge list of incredible guests for that episode, including Nostalgia Nerd, DJ Slopes, and many other people getting together and celebrating the hedgehog that cemented my love for gaming. And also, if you're a fan of 8-bit Sonic games, then definitely go and check out his Let's Play of Sonic on the Master System. He did a fantastic Let's Play, actually 100% completed the game. Really interesting stuff, so definitely go and check out his channel. 
And the second shout out I want to give is someone on Twitter called Mazgaming UK. It's thanks to him that I actually decided to do this video in the first place. He was thinking about getting a Neo Geo, or maybe he just got one and he wanted to know some games for the system, so one of the games that I suggested was Sonic Pocket Adventure. And hopefully after watching this video you can see why. So, thank you very much for watching. As always, I've got new videos coming every Friday, so please subscribe. Really hope you enjoyed this and look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye!